In this video we're going to uh, just review both absolute extrema and classifying local extrema using the first derivative. So absolute extrema, absolute maximums and minimums, remember, can occur at critical points or endpoints. So we need to check both. So the first thing, let's start with the critical points. We need to get the derivative. So, and of course, critical points occur when the derivative is zero or undefined. This will never be undefined, so let's just focus on where it will be zero. Let's use some algebra here. So we need to figure out where cosine is equal to sine. Um, hopefully you remember the hand trick and you can think about this, you know, where, where the two would be equal. One of those spots is pi over 4. The other is 5 pi over 4. Okay. Uh, you may want to review the hand trick. You may want to, uh, to look at a unit circle, but those are the two spots we, uh, we need to focus on. So now we do what's called the candidate test. Okay. And the candidate test, remember, has us actually go back to the original fun function, plug in the endpoints and the critical points to just see which one is largest and which one is smallest. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, let's go back to the original. Let's start with zero. So the sine of zero is zero, plus the cosine of zero is one. So I will write that work down. I suppose I don't. I don't think I really need to. But zero plus one is one. Now two pi is the same as zero here, so it's still zero plus one is one. Now pi over four. Uh, well, the sine of pi over four is square root of 2 over 2 plus the cosine of pi over 4 which is square root of 2 over 2. So we have square root of 2 over 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2. So we have 2 square roots of 2 over 2 which is just the square root of 2. Now that is larger than 1. So at this point we know or we, we at least think we've found the absolute maximum. Alright now 5 pi over 4 well, the sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine is also negative square root of 2 over 2. So we have negative, oh, I forgot the 2 there, negative 2 square roots of 2 over 2, which is negative square root of 2. So we have found both the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum through candidate test. Okay, do not forget that when we are finding absolute extrema, we must both focus on the endpoints and the critical points. Here we're going to find the critical points and then classify it as a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so we need the derivative. Um, you'll notice that this is a product. You know, we've got 5x and we've got e to the 2x. So we've got our first multiplied by derivative of the second plus the second multiplied by derivative of the first. Okay, so we could maybe write that a little nicer as 10x e to the 2x plus 5 e to the 2x now, awfully hard to think about finding zeros in, in this form. So I'm going to do a little bit of factoring here. I'm going to take a 5 and an e to the 2x out. And that will leave me with 2x plus 1. This is the derivative I'm going to kind of focus on and think about setting equal to 0. Okay. Now, 
5e to the 2x, this will always be positive. And in fact, I'm going to make a little note below that below here just with a plus. That will always be positive. We don't have to worry about that ever being 0. e to the 2x is always greater than 0, and so is 5, so positive. So the only critical point will come from 2x plus 1. Well, that will be 0 when x is negative 1 half. Okay, so that's our one and only critical point. So we put that on a number line. Okay. Now remember we pick a number less than negative one half. So remember this is always positive and then two times that negative plus one is negative. So positive multiplied by negative is negative. Next we pick a number bigger than negative one half. This first part is always positive and now this piece is also positive positive times positive is positive. So the derivative changes from negative to positive, meaning the original function changed from decreasing to increasing, making this a minimum. Remember the justification, f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay, so now we've classified it using uh, the first derivative test.